called Omegle and allows people to randomly meet strangers. And experts say it has led to a myriad of issues for minors. Omegle is a free website that connects strangers in online chat. No need to register. I to speak to Omegle, but there's no way to contact the website. Leif K. Brooks, who's based in the U.S., created the site when he was 18 and is still the owner, so we tried to track him down. He has no active social network accounts and it took several attempts through a separate company he founded called Octane AI to get a response. He said in an email that Omegle is moderated and in fact he's increased moderation in the last year, removing users who appear to be under 13 years old. But many of the people we spoke to on the site say that it's not moderated enough. I recently came across some articles about Omegle and people wanting the website to be shut down. And I've even heard rumors that it's going to be shut down this year. I don't really know what to think about this, but we still have Omegle right now. So if you want more Omegle videos, make sure to leave. For a website that has thousands upon thousands of unique users from all around the world coming together on this website where you can meet random strangers and communicate with them freely without verifying your age, nor is there any kind of know your customer requests or even logins just to get started. However, this kind of free communication and its relatively anonymous nature, it is bound for bad actors to take advantage of this website for those who are impressionable and are highly susceptible susceptible to manipulation tactics as well as extortion of information when you reveal too much about yourself or decide to send any kind of contact that can be traced back to you and the next thing you know someone becomes a victim resulting a tragic end to so and so individuals who fall prey to these so said individuals as well as the predators that have been roaming this website and eventually gets caught once someone takes note of it and due to the number of different cases is out there sooner or later the website will fall into a lawsuit that can potentially change the way the website operates so we'll cover some examples of cases against some individuals including a child who was exploited on this website for several years and we'll cover what happened and where it's at so here it is in 2014, an 11 year old girl going by AM logged onto Omega after using it with friends during sleepover parties in hopes of meeting other middle schoolers like her. Instead, she was connected to a convicted Canadian predator by Ryan Scott Florence, who was in his late 30s at the time. A younger teenager sitting in her bed in the dark with only the light of her phone shining on her face. At first, Florence wanted to see images of the child's smile, but he soon started asking for snaps of her body and then started demanding specific poses, props, positions, and hairstyles. He immediately started grooming the child and coerced her into giving him her contact information to keep in touch off the platform that allowed users to be anonymous. He manipulated her into sending sexually explicit images of herself and told her he could make her feel better and she needed to trust him because he was going to heal her. Even if his requests made her uncomfortable, from that point, she was being forced to becoming his online sex slave allegedly required her to be at his call at all hours of the day and night as her deadlines for his twisted assignments threatened to kidnap AM and her family if she doesn't comply to his demands. While the interactions Florence and AM happened on Omega, the platform continues to be a central part of their relationship because he forced her to use the website to recruit other children for him. AM was told she could stop sending Florence images at any time she wanted, but if she did, he threatened to leak the photos to her friends and family, telling her she'd get in trouble with her parents, school, and the police. For three years, Florence held this threat over AM's head. It wasn't until January 2018 when members of the Canadian police force contacted her parents to tell them the pervert had been arrested for child pornography and images of their daughter had been found in his stash. Authorities claim Omega is part of a group of social media apps that must have careful parental supervision. AM and her attorney said Omega is responsible for the abuse the child suffered 
Milford. And if they had employed proper moderation to prevent kids from matching with adults or other safety features, she would have never been abused by him. Omega has millions of monthly users from across the globe, where even kids 13 and older can use the platform with little to no parental supervision and permission, which doesn't have any system in place to ensure that users are being supervised. The site doesn't require any kind of means to verify their age before using the site, which doesn't prevent kids from being randomly matched with adults and vice versa. Omega had apparently warned users on its homepage that states predators have been known to use Omega, so please be careful, stated through May 2021 before the line was taken down. Right around the time, AM's attorney sent a preservation letter to the company. While that line has since been removed from the website, the suit states Omega Stills flounders the danger of its website on its homepage by acknowledging that users may not behave appropriately and their moderation is not perfect. Omega didn't return a request for comment and perhaps they won't for a while until the lawsuit takes place and maybe we'll get one from there. Usually when these kind of lawsuits happen, they usually take months or even years for them to go into fruition. However, I would also want to mention that this could possibly be the reason why most free VPNs or well-known ones had stopped working sometime around January the 13th of 2022 out of nowhere and was swiftly set in place, possibly in response to this lawsuit. So this is not a definitive reason on why it's the case, but that's that's just speculation on my part, based on some observations that I've done here and there. You would probably be wondering what this has anything to do with the whole VPN purge. And the answer to that is that in response to this lawsuit that's being held against them, the only rational conclusion is to ban the very thing that's been keeping most users safe, when which is the very thing that prevents their IP from actually leaking and tracking their real location, or even getting booted offline using DDoS tools and botnet attacks, in which Omega has yet to fully address that issue due to the vulnerability within WebRTC. So I'm not too sure if they're really going to fix that anytime soon, nor if this lawsuit actually goes into fruition. And if the plaintiff winning the case, then Omega as we know it may never be the same. And that's just one of the examples of the lawsuits happening against Omega. So that was just my take on the whole situation. Still to come, it's best that you take whatever precautions happen as some people on this website will try to do everything they can to get you to expose their information in the form of exchanging social medias or contact information, much like what happened with this, this child who suffered a lot due to her innocence being exploited. So I suggest if you're a parent, or guardian make sure to supervise your children's internet activities or better yet flat out block access to the website so proceed with caution and use the website at your own risk till then this is lr7 covering the omega lawsuit that led to the vpn purge and logging out and the more Omegle is talked about on platforms like TikTok and YouTube, the more young people are drawn to sites like Omegle.